six, 706, let's call this meeting to order. I don't need a motion for that, do I? We can just call it. Yeah. Yeah, we just call yeah. it. Okay. We just call it. All right. Uh, so first item on the agenda is the library director's report. Um, should, should I note that Chris is absent? Oh, no, yeah. no, she's absent, yeah. Um, do you guys want me to read the director's report? Sure. Okay. Uh, director's report for April 6, 2023, with the information up to March 27, 2023. Curbside pickups are one, patrons were 212, students are 299, story time attendees, we had 21 adults, 27 children for a total of 42. Volunteers, we had one with a total of two visits for a total of 3.5 hours for the month, and we issued seven new library cards. Um, Facebook page reach in March was 2240. Total page likes for Facebook was 806. Page followers for Facebook was 887. Facebook page and profile visits were 309. Our Instagram reach um, in March was 47. Uh, the followers for Instagram in March were 79. And our profile visits were 28. Uh, the most popular post and the first most popular post was Miss Patricia is starting a second story time with 974. And the second most popular one was Did you know that the library has museum passes with 702? We had 87 Wi Fi connections in March. And for library numbers, Hubberston items circulated in March were 1,367. All items circulated at Hubberston in March were 1,303. Uh, requested holds were 217, and the total number of patrons registered at Hubberston was 1,456. And the total number of items in the library's collection in February was 12,427. Overdrive total checkouts for FY 2022 are 4,892. Uh, for March, 454. Um, the library was closed Tuesday, March 14th and Wednesday, March 15th due to the storm. The Senior Book Club met on March 23rd and discussed The Ruins of Gorlin by John Flanagan. There were eight in attendance. The Not Just Knitting program was scheduled for March 14th, but due to the storm was canceled. This program will be held on March 28th. The, dis the display for March was to celebrate Women in History Month in both the adult reading room and the children's reading room. Miss Patricia is now hosting two story times each week, one on Mondays at 1 p.m. for pre-K children and one on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. for infants and toddlers. Gabby will be starting a new position in mid-April and her hours may need to change. I will address that should it become necessary. Chris will address that should it become necessary. We will be hosting two programs in May. The first will be West African Drumming with Jafar and the Wendell Warriors um, with a date to be determined. And you can paint pastel with Greg Maychak on May 23rd from 6 to 8 p.m. This program is supported in part by a grant from the Hubberston Cultural Council, a local agency which is supported by the Mass Cultural Council, a state agency. People can register at the front desk or by calling 978-928-4775. I regret to inform you that the services account is overdrawn. The increased cost of electricity and heating oil for contributing factors as well as unexpected boiler repairs. The FY23 February report shows us that $2,954.93 remaining. In March, our expenditures were $7,353.02, which includes $2,054 for heating oil, $859 for National Grid, $1,450 for Piper Web, it's a website annual fee, um, for, and upgrading the website for accessibility and 2885 for boiler pump replacement. To bring the services account to a zero balance for April, $4,398.09 needs to be moved from other accounts. Respectfully submitted by Christine Barbera. We do have an agenda item about the last paragraph about the budget, so that's after the meeting minutes, so we'll have a discussion about that. Any other, yes? What was that event again about uh, Someone drumming or something? Or? It was, um, it is the, the, the uh, so West African drumming, drumming with Jafar and Wendell Warriors. And so what, the, what day? It hasn't been determined yet. So who, uh, who chose that particular event? Um, Chris does all of our programming. 
Oh, Christos, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. I think they've been there before. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure that they did in the fall with a couple different age groups. Does your budget support that kind of thing? Yes, yes. No, not the cultural council. Well, so some of these, uh, I think the paint. Greg Maycheck is, is a kind of a shared. So okay. um, the cultural council gave out grants. So I believe that it's a split cost between the library programming and cultural council having paid for that event. Yeah, and I think out of our services budget line, it comes to programming mm -hmm. that we do. Chris decides the program. Mm -hmm. So I had some ideas of things we could do in the yeah, library. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I think she's definitely what is the to capacity for sitting in the, that room? Do you know offhand? I do not know that answer offhand. Between okay. 20 and 30. Yeah. I think it would also depend on what you're doing. So if you're yeah. there for like a presentation, I remember at one point we had somebody in with like birds of prey, raptors, and we had oh, yeah. it packed in that room. And then the next time they came, we actually moved it to the Slade building, having known that there would not be sufficient space, but it was a library event being held in the Slade building. In the Slade building? Mm -hmm. In this room or what? The room next to us, senior. Oh. They allowed us. Oh, yeah. I think you're old enough to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah. They're quite friendly. Yeah. And I imagine things like the um, pastel painting yeah. probably has more limited space because everybody's going to have an easel in mm -hmm. front of them, so they're not going to be able to fit. You might not be able to fit 25 or 30. Yeah, I was thinking of uh, music and poetry readings, mm -hmm. two, two, two things I'm concerned with. And, uh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, some thoughts about it. Yeah, definitely. So if you have ideas, I certainly yeah. would encourage you to, to talk to Chris um, about it. And if you have any ideas for particular poets or musicians, I think I do. that would yeah. be, Chris would be receptive to that. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions about the director's report? There were a couple um, typos, like in the 2023. I don't know if we should send it back to her for those or if we should just make corrections to like the uh, April 6, 2022, 23. And then there were a couple on the back. I did like, um, I, I changed a couple things here. Like, yeah, it said and instead of as, but um, yeah. Okay, so we, just, we can it doesn't so know that grammatical just to know changes a couple changes to, to the report to just reflect. Um, accuracy and dates and okay. language. Okay. Great. Did everybody have a chance to review the library minutes? I reviewed the minutes. I know I did. I don't have any notes on here, so either or I think they were great or <laughs> I'm going to defer to great. somebody else. I think that they are usually Fantastic. Thank you. I think it's a lot of detail about the the grant. The, the grant and options. our summary. Yeah. Can I have a motion to approve the March 2023 minutes? So move. Second. Sure. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Minutes are approved. All right. So as Chris mentioned in her director's report, um, our services line item in our budget is about forty is going to be about forty eight hundred dollars over budget. So she had talked to uh, someone in the like the treasurer's office, and they suggested that we move money around, which we can do. Um, she had when she had emailed me and Tom about it, she. Um, had said options are employee support and supplies or payroll as a last resort and she she said she was hesitant to ask about donations or state account um, however as I look at the monthly reports for the budget she's pretty close to spending out the employee support and supply account so I think it makes most sense to either take them donations or state account and which is what that money is there for um, but I'm open the, to discussions. What about the various CDC accounts? Or some of the other 
Yeah, uh, or any of the trustee or any of the trust accounts as well. Not the trust, <coughs> but the money we have uh, allocated for, for instance, electrical repairs. This thing was a pump, electric mm. pump. We could uh, perhaps use that money. So money. you're saying you would take it from the CPC funds yeah. for first floor repairs? Yeah, I think uh, I think I have her last report that listed all those accounts. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm doing this paper shuffle, but if somebody has those accounts. Oh. I think we had three open accounts. It's on the bottom of the report, right? Right, so we have the foundation repair, which we wouldn't be able to use. We have um, we have the library first floor rehab. Yep, and then we have another one, I think. The long range plan? Long range plan. I wouldn't. We don't have that. I mean, no, actually, they're going to, CPC is taking that away. Yeah. Um, I think we've underspent the first floor repair significantly. So we have money available there. Does the that fall within the parameters of that proposal? Well, we can certainly ask about it, but I, I, I would say that it does, but uh, it was an unexpected first floor repair, but nevertheless, a first floor repair. Yeah. And the only impact I have on that is that we did do some electrical work, and I got a bill for about 2,000 bucks, so that would also come from that account. Right, that's going to come from that account, and we also have windows that we need to do from that account. Right, but this is actually spent. Right, it does expend, yes. So uh, I, I would ask the treasurer if we can slide money from. I could see like a potential for like the boiler pump replacement as part of that, but that would only be like the 2,885 of that 4,000. I'm sorry, I can't remember what the other. So the other. Other dollar amounts were basically for an increased uh, supply of heating oil for National Grid and for the website annual fee. I don't see those as fitting under the description of the fund for the first floor, though. Well, they're consumables. Do you consumables. think they would? They're consumables. So I don't think they would fall under first floor. I don't think they would either. They're consumables. I don't mind asking, but do. I don't think that they would. I don't think you can do you it. Could ask. Right, he's not okay. advocating okay. for that. Okay. okay. So then we're on the same point. Okay. So, so, so then do we'll we need to go back to CPC and ask if we can do that because that's, heat pump was not in that proposal. And so then it would likely be we should be looking at the first floor rehab for other things and then I would be going back and looking at um, if there's anything prohibiting I have no problem with either the state account or donation but those would be the two that I would be looking at Why to cover the expenses. Chris said she didn't want to use the state account. She said she was reluctant to ask if we could. If we could, because I think she felt like it needed to come out of her line items. Okay. And which I, I feel like it's appropriate in this case, because there are increases and unexpected increases in this regard. It's I, extraordinary. I, it's an extraordinary cost. Exactly. I feel like the um, the heating oil <coughs> could come from donations if we have enough in there. We do. Because that, it seems like that, because it's an extraordinary thing, we could use that that mm -hmm. money for that. The website is more of a, you know, like part of doing, like a regular thing. So maybe that could come from, um, I mean, I don't think it would be inappropriate to use state money for something like that because it relates to our services. But the oil, I don't know. I mean, maybe spreading it around is I what agree. I'm saying. And so maybe we can discuss that. Like the breaking it down, we have the national grid of fourteen one thousand four hundred fifty. That seems to be more of a like donation account funding. Eight hundred and fifty nine is national grid. Do I have it wrong? Yeah, so she's sorry. 2,054 is for heating oil, 859 is for national grid, 1,450 is for Piper Web, which is the website, and 2,885 is for the boiler pump replacement. Oh, 2885? 2885. Wait, so there's four things. There's four things. Yeah. Oh, wait, I was confused. Oh, there's heating oil and national grid. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay, I'm so sorry. So one's oil and one's electricity. Okay. Um, I, I guess I would say if we have the money, then I would say both of those um, should come from the donations. We have ample money. and donations, we have 22000 in the state town. We have 38000 Okay. I was thinking that if we could keep the boiler from running longer, we'd use less oil. If we could keep it from running longer? Yeah, if, if the pump would break and we don't run the boiler, we'll use less oil. <laughs> oh. Uh, funny. That was, come on, folks. <laughs> Pick up on uh -huh. that. <laughs> We'll just issue uh, down coats for the staff. You have to hold up a yeah. thing. That's a joke. We're yeah. here all week, folks. So. Now your question. Heat pump replacement. Do we already have a heat pump? No, no. It's a boiler pump. water circulating pump. Boiler pump. It's actually it's a condensate pump. pump. It, most, uh, it collects the pump. steam, condensed steam. steam. You don't mean the steam and the heat pump. Pumps it no back way. into okay. the boiler as water. It's we want to replace it with a heat pump. Isn't there in this done. town a person in charge of facilities management? I mean, no, us. Not for the library. Yeah. Us. Yeah. What do other buildings do? Very similarly. The idea of taking money out of donations to pay for electrical power doesn't seem to be the right thing to do, for example. Well, the alternative is to go, is to overrun those accounts and then go to the town meeting and ask for replenish. And um, I mean, we could do that. Yes. I if if, I, if my utility bill goes up, I have to pay it. I don't. Uh, you so know. do we. What? So do we. Yeah. But the library trustees were responsible for the building maintenance. Okay. That doesn't seem to me to be a good idea. Well, we're, it's a standalone building. Huh? It's a standalone yeah. entity. And it has pros and cons, you know, when you're when you're in charge of yourself, you're not dictated to by others. So. Also, I mean, I, I've only served on this for three years, but this is the first time it's come up. You know, okay. It's not like a regular thing that we're, and we have the grant money to, um, to replace it. We just haven't been able to do it yet. But I mean, so we're not, we're trying to mitigate this problem so it doesn't happen again. What grant money do we yeah, have to replace it? We do have grant money. I don't think we do. I think we gave it back. I don't think we ever had grant money for a heat pump replacement. Oh, for not for heat pump. No, for, for the boiler. boiler. For boiler. Oh, we never got that. We never got that money. Yeah, oh. I, don't, I think we took we never, it off the warrant. Okay. Uh, that, was, that wasn't even I'm on still the warrant. Confused. Years ago, that was, perhaps. That was coming up on the warrant like in a year or two. Um, on the that's five being plan. pushed. It's on the five year plan, but it's been pushed, and so it's not been. Um, we have not submitted a request, a formal request for <coughs> that to be considered. All right, so let's put a candidate account down for each one. We said National Grid donation, $859. Could be donation or it could be statewide. All right. What would be the candidate accounts for the oil? My, my idea was, or the way I look at it, is that the oil and the electrical would come from donations. The website would come from the state. And the... Um, boiler pump? The boiler pump, we were going to... Uh, I wrote down we were going to ask the treasurer if we could spend money from the first floor rehab. I think we might have to go back to CPC and ask them because it wasn't in that proposal. The proposal. Okay, so that's I think, not. I think if I go back and look at that proposal, it was Windows, um, Chris's office, electrical, and we didn't specifically say. And that's not really yeah. a first floor rehab, right? That, that's not making the first floor, yeah, better, right? That's well, in a way, still functioning. But so could oh, that come from donations also? I mean, so we just I, ask? I would. I would propose that we ask, however, that we plan for the boiler pump, the heating oil, and national grid to all come from donations. That the website with accessibility features comes from the state account. And that we split those so that um, thirty-two twenty-eight. Not a bad split. Okay, Morgan proposed boiler 30, pump, oil, 30, and nat national grid be paid for from donations. 28, 42. Okay. 
account and the website cost be paid for. And, and Bob, to your point, I understand your concerns about like using the donation account. Yeah. The race fund, the road race fund, um, states that it's assisted to ongoing library operations. And so an oper I mean, I think so to be keeping able to the keep building, doors open. being able to keep the doors open would be library operations. So I think it would fit within that. Okay. Does anybody understand why we're reluctant to approach the state? I think I heard that said earlier. I, I reluctant to approach the state. Why we are reluctant to approach the state for funding of something. Anything. When you say state, do you mean? Well, like to I'm, use repeating, the state I'm account. repeating what, yeah, yeah to, to use, use the, the state, state account. account. Oh, I'm, I'm all for using the state no, account. No, but, but I, we wonder what Chris's reservation was. Oh. Does she think maybe then they'll think the town isn't giving us enough money or something? She didn't say that in her email. She okay. just, all she said in her email, let me just see if I can pull it up real quick. Um, and my follow up question, of course, is why don't we use the state funds for something? Thirty-three thousand. So Are there some fluid state funds that just exist there that we could draw on? Every year they allocate an amount to the library. There's no t no strings attached to it. I can't tell you. I don't know the rules. I mean, all she said was, "Oh, sorry. I am hesitant to suggest the state account or donations account, but I also do not feel that those options should be off the table either." Oh. So I feel like it's her just saying that option, but before. Yeah. So my understanding, by the way, she's also worded it, is that we would first utilize what is remaining in the services account, correct? Because if we add up the line items, it is more than the 40. Right, because she's going to use up the 2300 or 2800 that's in services. Exactly. And so that also means we're going to be running it every month, we're going to have to look at this, that because the services accounts, we still have. April, May, and June. We have three months left of for maintenance, for general running, keeping the facilities right. running. So, so we're going to probably have to revisit this each month until we hit the end of the fiscal year. Yeah. So that or be within our power, I mean, it would behoove us to um, be yeah. aware of what the expenditures are, but where she's asking for the $4,398 and change. If we were to be able to give her leeway of five thousand dollars or so, so there's a little buffer. Is it worth it? What is coming up? That would be a question when she returns. Of what are other expenses coming up? Electricity, uh, national monthly. grid will be monthly. Yeah. So we'll certainly have that each month. I, I feel like it's not really over budget because there is money like if you mm -hmm. take all the money the library gets there's still money available to pay this bill it just normally is paid from a certain account right mm -hmm. so I don't think it's a pro it's a it doesn't seem to make sense to me to put it under something that's going to mess up the, the next few months for those for those items I would are you talking are you talking about like supplies and yeah, yeah I don't right. think we should take money out of those accounts because she's spending that those money are out. ongoing right those are ongoing yeah. and she's actually been she's increased story time so she's buying increased supplies for that mm -hmm. um, and the and closer we get to May etc when we have a better idea and she's here to be able to discuss anticipated expenses I think that would be a time to where we can say all right this month national grid can be paid from supplies yeah but before we pull from because supplies is not much of a budget either at this point. No, there's only 5,800 left, and that's as of February 28th. So that doesn't exactly March. March. And she's at 70 percent, so I, I can foresee that she's gonna spend that out. So it feels like it should be state account, donation account. I'm happy to email um, CPC and see if we can do the boiler pump the boiler pump out of the first floor rehab mm -hmm. and see what they say but when I went to that meeting they were like stay within the parameters of what you requested. And I so. likewise feel um, being responsible to other town groups that we should and that would help foster better relationships when we come down the road to ask for other 
CPC funds. So we should ask that we or we stay. shouldn't ask? I don't mind asking, but likewise, almost just as Chris put it, of although we can spend from supplies being aware, um, even from employee support, neither of those accounts have a lot. Um, is it possible to use from donations? So where she says, I'm hesitant to ask, likewise, I would feel, I personally would feel hesitant to ask CPC for funds. I don't feel, I feel like it might apply to the first floor rehab, so it might be worth asking, but I will go on the record saying, I'm hesitant to ask them about that. I feel like the first floor rehab we've already discussed and we had other intentions. On the other hand, I think the CPC has always been very supportive I agree. And so asking doesn't hurt. I wouldn't say fight over it, but I'd say yes. Yep. Okay. Exactly. I'll send an email and ask. Yep. So it might help us get funding to, you know, to replace the thing, right? Like we were, had talked about before. So saying we have this issue might help if we go back later and say yeah. we're, we're asking okay. for it. Okay. All right. I think we're in agreement. So we've got a motion. Uh, are we in agreement that the electricity, oil, and boiler pump, though, as a plan B, would come up from donation, that the website with accessibility would come from the state account? That's what I wrote down. I think that sounds like a reasonable. I'll make a motion for that. Do I need to state oh, it in more clear English? Uh, I have the boiler pump, oil, and national grid to be paid for from the donations account and the website cost to be be paid for from the state account. Connie will email CPC to find out if the boiler pump cost could be funded from the first floor rehab grant. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, Morgan and, and um, Bob, Bob second. Okay. And, and I guess we could just see if, you know, if every month now our costs are just way more than figure something out but this yeah seems like a one-time thing yeah it seemed like a little like a bit of a perfect storm that a bunch of stuff just kind of happened yeah you know like I don't think we expected the boiler pump to go all right and the website thing this is like a I think she pay, probably pays every month or every year but this but is the accessibility of redesigning the yeah. website is different than the actual maintenance and that's <coughs> what we've been anticipating and yeah. working with mm -hmm. I'm all in favor. Okay. okay. Opposed? Obtained. Question? Motion passes. Oh. The donations, where does the money come from? It comes from the road race. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It comes from people who maybe make donations like in memory of somebody. Yeah. So it's kind of like a hodgepodge of, but I would say. People who do that, so they give that money thinking they might go to pay an electrical bill or a heating bill. I imagine money would, if I were making a donation to a library, we'd go to buy books or education material. And sometimes it oh. does. Mm -hmm. it, should be de it should be determined to go that way, too. Well, you what we can say is we, could, we made $3,000 in the road race last year, so the $3,000 we made in the road race can go It should be earmarked for library well, facilities. I think if people give money, they have the option to say, I wanted to buy books. But if they give it in an undeclared or undesignated way, it's up to us as intelligent humans All to right. keep this library rolling and, we, and spend it okay. wisely. We have had for years kind of this honor system. The glass jar was on the counter. I don't know if it's still there oh, for fine. donations. So in place of like late fees and or when there was something going on and when we had the books for sale and things like that, right. we just kind of go into that. I could be wrong. I think book sales were separate. Uh, but book sales go into a donation account. Okay. Uh, no, actually, let me think through that. Because I think it doesn't... Because that's what was my town. initial, but then the I town. Think reporting. They yeah. go back to the town. Yeah. I think the way I look at it is the, all the money the library gets is one pot, right? And so if we use the you money... You mean the money on the race? No, everything. everything. I mean... You know, the, the donations help to fund the library, and the library has a lot of different types of expenses. So it's not that we're spending less on books. We're just using, you know, she still has a line item for books and other things. Yeah. She's still buying those things. We're, we're using the donations so, she does, so we don't have to cut into the, to the book budget. 
And if we do neglect to pay the electricity bill at some point, the computers go down and she can't check out books. It's not going to benefit the yeah. community. So, so I hear what you're saying, and I would love in a perfect world for there to be enough, but as we've all said, there is a perfect storm, and I think a lot of families are facing it as well, of increased costs. The library is facing it too. So, so I wrote down, concern about use of donation donations funds for uses other than books and programs. That's my own personal R Right. Yep. So yeah. we, could, we could, you know, discuss that. Statement. Yeah. Some, I don't know if that's a different discussion. What does the fire department do, for example, if they have an increase in their electrical bill? They probably do the same and kind of thing. You may want to watch well, and department. listen to the the fire department's a lovely department to listen to of how they have to deal with facilities so but that would be for another time and i would bring okay. it back to the library and our I'm, agenda. I'm learning a, a few things here i didn't okay. wasn't aware of no yeah so bringing it back to our library agenda though um okay. so maybe i'll just say concern about ongoing use of donation funds so Fine. we'll have to discuss it again if it comes up yeah. again. Because, I mean, I agree with you, but I feel like we have to pay the bills, and that sure, seems yeah. like a good way to do it. want to handcuff ourselves. Exactly. I want to keep the library running smoothly, efficiently, and allow the, for them to continue to purchase new books. I'd like for them to be able to continue to check them out in a more smooth manner, and I feel like right now this would be the easiest way of continuing library services. So, concern about use of donation funds for uses other than for books and programs, but utilities and heat are also important for library services. In order for the library to be open, in order for us to function, those are considerations that we also have to take into consideration. Yes, the library director is kind of in charge of the running, but we're here to support her and to support the facility itself in the building. And there are unexpected expenditures that I think that we have to help address where to fund from, which I think we've done and we are all in agreement. Okay. I mean, I think it's great that we have, you know, she's prudent with her budget, so yeah. we do, yeah. we do yeah. have yeah. the, um, you know, we do have the funds to cover it. Right. It's not like we're asking somebody, you know, the town for it, so that's good. Yeah. on to the library scholarship update. Any further discussion? Anything else you'd like to think? No? Good. Did you send me an email about a website issue for yes. the library with the scholarship? Did Are we know? able to update that? I don't think I have I don't think we have the password for it. Yeah. I can I, I thought you sent me an email that I couldn't find it and then so I was so just kind of <laughs> on the on the Hubberson Library webpage when we go under events. Scholarship just has a typo. Mm. Um, I don't know if Ann has access to that or not. Is it the you in public? Yeah. Um, so right. Oh, yep. Gotcha. Okay. Elsewhere, it seemed okay. It was just bad type. A minor type. Okay. Silly yeah. question again. Are we being televised? Yes. Yep. Recorded. I don't know if it's live televised. No, you can watch it later. Yeah. yeah but actually, I think posted on, on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. You pick the idea. I'm sorry. Well, put on your best face, Bob. <laughs> you, know, you know, we're we're like we're elected officials, so that's yeah. why. Yeah. Anybody who come in and sit right here and listen to our discussion, and they should be yeah. able to, they can. And so, what's the difference? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay, we'll, we'll well, we do put you through makeup it. before you come <laughs> on the next meeting. Yeah, thanks for the reminder. No, it's just uh, anyway. So, so, do we have an update on the scholarship, or just that? Oh, oh, that was it the was update. I think it was posted. Was that the? Is that why? No, the I just wasn't sure if you decided anything. I know, like you modified the um, advertisements, and it has it gone out to guidance counselors, or you know. Yeah. Yes, and to my knowledge, Chris, it has been posted. Um, I will make a second round of 
announcements and things like that. I don't know. I was wondering if it was, hey, do we have any? But I wasn't expecting any applicants. It's not due until no. June 30th. So advertise to the area high schools. Yeah. Yeah. I just put it on there in case if there was something you needed to. And, yeah, and we do about. need to talk about the forms, right? Like the review and the, the rubric. Yeah, so we'll do that at the next meeting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's add it to the agenda. You, did you do that last year? The scholarship, we we had we we get the applications for the scholarship and then we, we review them using this checklist thing. Yeah, I remember yeah. that last year. Yeah. So I would assume we'll want to go into executive function and have that towards the end of our probably July meeting. Okay. Given that we'll still be accepting until the end of June. That would be my anticipation. Yes, that makes sense. The May yep. meeting. The May meeting would be the rubric, mm -hmm. and then at the July meeting, we'll review applications. Am I correct that that's another very good use of the race funds? Yes. What's that? The scholarship. The scholarship. Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's another example. Excellent. Where we made a decision. Yeah. We're going yep. with it. It's good yep. use. So I will say um, the performance review, thank you all for the uh, signatures. We went in, had her signature, went over it. There were no questions. She thought it was very well done. Um, made copies, and it was right before the snowstorm blizzard. I think so. And I brought it to the town, and they had no idea what to do with it. But then they ended up accepting it, so I will say <laughs> that. So I was like, I don't know what ended up happening. So the town, okay. so the town administrator has a copy. I, that's where I'm saying came into this building, what it was done after, I believe my assumption and understanding would be that it was put with the employee records. I think that's probably what would happen, yes. So. Did it carry a cover letter talking about anything else? I did not include a cover letter. I mean the potential for an increase? We had asked, and it was kind of in, um, Part of a more in-depth email. Well, email. Some other things. I'm looking for something that documented it. It was okay. documented, um, and it's in there. And then that actually leads into the next one, I believe, too. The agenda item, it, which is um, yeah, library check performance review, how to approach grant raises. And so, thank you, Krista, for sending an email out to the other library trustees yeah. on um, what they've done and. It was insightful to hear from other. Yeah. So, yes. It's a um, it's a project, <laughs> or it was a project for them to do that. Yeah. It was a relatively limited response, though, yeah. if I remember correctly. It was only two. Yep. Yep. People. And there were about two dozen people saying, "Take me off this list." <laughs> Oh really? Yes. Oh. <laughs> so I think you know people come come and go, but I think those two, you know, even though there were only two, they were pretty valuable. Yeah, yeah. one man, uh, one yeah. person expressed yeah. himself pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Very creative. <laughs> so um, I just um, the thing you asked about uh, should we put that in here that we. Just say we forwarded, to the, say forwarded the paperwork. Krista, I very much appreciate how you translate what we try to say. <laughs> and that's the one thing when I read the minutes, I'm like, you formulate our fragment of sentences into very clear Go minutes. Thank you. We come out Thank you. looking a lot smarter than we really are. <laughs> <laughs> well, it helps with the video. So but people I, but read just the minutes, they're like, okay, instead of watching the video. <laughs> yes. Um, I just, I just want to, I just wonder if we want to say that we also requested to the town about this merit pay. Is that what yeah. you said? So, so how did we? Or the so review we, included a we request. We had sent through email as well as in the written submission of uh, director's review um, our trustees' feelings with regards to merit based and consideration of okay so the review included a request from trustees to consider a merit I'm just making this up yeah so merit-based merit -based. Merit -based. Merit -based. 
increase. I would say an mm -hmm. option for a merit-based increase. One consideration I'd love for the town to be aware of is when employees go the extra mile, and this is the year to where Chris completed her degree mm -hmm. and went through those steps of furthering and gain, continuing education mm -hmm. at personal expense yeah. um, and personal time to do so to benefit the town and to further the role of library director. Um, and I'm sure she's not alone in that. And I'm sure that yeah. there are other employees that go that extra mile of continuing their education, learning <coughs> new skills, attending meetings. Um, There's no built-in uh, increase for educational accomplishments in the contract. There would be the look for a teacher, right? In the school system it would be based on school district school district and teacher unions right yeah um, but there's time for a librarian there's no I, we have asked the town for clarification and to see if there is and what our town procedure on that is without response as of yet okay. good to have a wink, contract wink, not, that would specify a certain amount of money for a degree. If you were a teacher, you'd probably get a higher pay if you got a master's degree mm -hmm. in your field. That would be a good, might be a good precedent for a librarian too, I think. Well, and there's there. state requirements, I think, yep. that's mm -hmm. why she did that. Yep. Yeah, so she had to get a, her undergraduate degree to be director, and then she mm -hmm. has to complete four additional courses to become, like, fully certified. Mm -hmm. But no money is put coming out automatically because of that. No. Um, should be. Yes. Well, we the library should pay for the course. We I think the coursework through the state is oh, it's free. Uh -huh. But we did reimburse for oh, right. some of her tuition, if not all of it. Yeah, I believe. Hmm. There's no librarians union, is there? I mean, it depends there on your institution, be. right? Like, at a university, you're part of the mm -hmm. teachers' union, and probably at a public library, you're probably part of a town type, maybe, union or so. I don't know. So, I think it's okay. so should I say we reviewed these email responses? Because we all we have read them, right? Yep. But I don't know. I don't know if there's anything follow up completely on. actionable that we yeah. can take on it at this point. At this time. time. Okay. I commend some other towns and fortitude by some individuals. Yes. I did I I don't remember which towns, but I think they're probably a little bit bigger. Was it Milford? There's a Sheffield. Sheffield. Sheffield was one and then other one was Sheffield's pretty small. Um, Williamstown. Yeah, there's a Williamstown. Williamstown and, and Sheffield. Sheffield. So. Um, so maybe I'll just say they provided a procedure that they followed to do that or something. Lamented with our situation. <laughs> okay, thanks. And then again, I think that would be much more universal issue. Well, if we want to put <coughs> merit raise on, one way to um, approach it would be to put an article on the town. The town war. That's what the one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm saying for us, yeah. mm -hmm. if we're serious about it, that's one way to. Uh, all, all warrants, all such warrants, would have to be select board approved. Mm -hmm. So it, it gets them to, to declare their intention. Mm -hmm. I would go so far as to make a motion that we do that, if that's anybody's will. Could you rephrase that again? I'm not quite sure I follow you. I would make a motion that we um, write a very simple article uh, for the select board to put on the town meeting that would 
illustrate the merit increase. Bring it to a vote. Okay. If there's no other mechanism. Would we want to talk to, to reach out to Nate again and then say that's our intention? If he doesn't have, if he doesn't, doesn't have, have another no, uh, advice, but, uh, another formal. When you bring in an article that's typed up and he's going to give you his advice. <laughs> so the motion, the warrant would, would request? Request the merit increase, period. Yeah, no big, no big deal. So then we have to figure out how much it is. Well. Is there, is there a contract right now for the librarian? Does she have a contract? I don't believe so. There should be a contract for the librarian. I think she's an employee of Will, like many of the other employees in town. I'm guessing. Yeah, the contract sure. should, should have built in step increases, I think. I think there's step increases, but I. Is it, let me think through that. Are there step increases? That's where I, I don't know. I think the town I thought there was step increases. I think the town approaches it as a blanket. Everybody gets Everyone 1%. Gets a 3%. Okay. Everybody gets 2%. Uh, so cur currently, like, they're just cost of living. Hmm. That's not considering promotion. For instance, someone moves from lieutenant to chief. Right. Their opportunity rises. Right. She, she, when she moved to director, she must have got it. She got it. Okay. So where did she move from? What was her position? She was an assistant. And then she made a career ladder of some kind in the, in the contract. Okay. I think you're speaking of a contract that doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Tom motion to write a warrant at the up for the upcoming town meeting to request a merit increase for the library director. But, no. but we were going to talk to. Had I Nate emailed first. Nate? You had emailed, and I'm yeah. looking here at classification and compensation plan from September 2020. It's on the cost. It's on the website. So, yeah. um, so an employee is paid at the maximum step in the grade. So it looks like there are some grades. I just haven't found them yet. I make no mistake about it. If you, if you approach Nate with a warrant article, he'll probably say, "Let me put it in as a budget line item." And that's probably a much bureaucratically easier way to handle it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think a warrant would express our intent. Okay. So, so I'm the sorry, a warrant article. The motion on the floor, then, right? Now you made a motion, right? I'll second it. Okay. Uh, Anybody in favor? All in favor. All in favor. Opposed. Thank you. Who gets to write it? It should be real simple, like one sentence. Uh, I can write it. I just need to find out the, the process for it. But I'm just, I'm just looking here at the non-union pay plans to see. Yeah, what we have to figure out what we're asking for. I guess it'd be a certain amount, right? Yeah, like we need to find out how much he's currently making and then what percentage increase we would recommend. Yeah, and we should look at um, area town librarian salaries. Well, see, that's, that's what the other email yeah. was about, yeah, but that's, that's going to take suggested. a little bit of time, right? Well, when, when I can do some of that if you want. I'd be happy to. I just am if you go to the MBLC website, you can see a list of all the salaries okay. by town. Okay. okay. So um, I can, I'm happy to go look that up and then kind of figure out what the step plan is because it says there's FY23 non-union pay plan and there's 14 steps and there's... This is for Hubbardson. Mm -hmm, and there's okay. 14 grades. So, so I don't know how that plays into merit or if that's just steps. Cost of living. Well, so yeah. If we know how much he's getting, we could just consider like five percent or ten. Yeah. Ten percent. You know. It just you know. I mean, we're not making up a number, but we're we're selecting a number yeah. based on like if it's a merit, then it could be just so, yeah. So out she's that in way. the H grade. I just don't know where she's at in the step. Oh. There's a single page sheet of paper that has that on it. Like oh, like this? Yep. Yep. Yeah, but it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't, but we don't know where, where she's yeah, at. Yeah, we, we don't know the, don't, the like, intersection. Yeah, like we know the grade, but we don't know where she's at in the steps, so and then you have to prorate that, I guess, by number of hours worked. And so our review, would that, how do you move from step to step? I mean, 
mean, I don't have a clue. I, I know. I mean, maybe we should be recommending that she just move to the next step. Next grade, yeah. Although the steps aren't like that exciting. I mean, they're like fifty cents. Mm -hmm. Does she belong to an association of librarians in the state? Is there any kind of a professional organization that, to which she belongs? She belongs to the, or the, the library belongs to the American Library Association. But, you know, the problem is each town can do its own thing. She meets the state requirements yeah. so that our library can get funding, but I don't think they dictate salaries. Each town has to decide. Okay, okay. I think all we have to do is initiate something and then it'll flow from there. Yeah. Okay. So, like, like, what's 5% of the middle range or something? So, the know? middle range, just say, like, so step 7 out of 14. And grade age is twenty nine dollars and fourteen cents an hour. Okay. And so twenty nine fourteen times if you did a ten percent raise it would be two ninety one. If you did a five percent raise it would be a dollar forty five increase. But should it be hourly or should it just be a merit like based bonus? No, a, a bonus. Hourly. hourly. Okay. So, yeah. You want to earn it for the rest of your life. Good point. So a warrant to the attorney to request a merit increase of what, what, what did you say? A dollar ninety? Well, I mean, oh, I don't. Depends. Well, we don't know where she's at in the steps, right? So I mean, do we want to say like a five percent? Uh, yeah, let's say five percent. Uh, yeah, then say we will need to determine what what her current uh, based on. believe they have a human resources committee anymore. It's a human resources advisory board, I guess? It's a personal I mean, There was such a thing, but I don't think it exists now. Oh, it doesn't? Okay. Does it, Lord? I don't know, but I don't mind following up with Nate, and then if this may be we revisit at a future agenda, but um, similar to the employee review, I would propose that this be if we we're going to delve into and discuss, that that would be a topic for an executive function. Executive, right, meeting. Executive Session. Function. Session. About the actual wage increase, of course. Yeah. Although it's probably posted on the website. Okay, so Tom motioned to write a, wa a warrant article for the upcoming town meeting to request a merit increase for the library director of 5% per hour based on her current hourly wage. Bob second, all approved. So, Sounds good. That's the starting point. I mean, okay. it might not end up going anywhere. Okay. We get to get the discussion okay. started. So, I'll, I'll find our okay. and have recognition for the facts of having raised to the role of library director and completed. Yep. Yeah. But so it. Did we get an all in favor? Yes. Yes. But. We don't need to put the amounts here. We no. we could just no. say five percent and then find out the rest of it later. So somebody has time to write this. I mean, I'll be glad to write it. Kind of mm -hmm. If you if you want to, that's fine. I'm, I'm happy to, to say Connie. And I mean, at some point, someone good. needs to go meet with Nate. So, like, are you are you back from the beach now, full time? I'm back. I'll write it. That's fine. All right, because I can look at the statewide library salaries too okay. and stuff like that. Thank well, you. We get another 70 degree day. The beach is only a couple hours. Away. I know, seriously. <laughs> Next week, this okay. be in the 70s. This is really good to just to get this started. And also, it, we need to understand better just how it's all set up. So, yep. this will be good. Thank you. And it would be nice to know going forward so that the trustees know the process. Exactly. Okay. I feel like this is our learning. This is a good learning year for us. No yes. one's going to do it for us. Any other discussion about this? Nope. Good. We're good. All right. Um, just quick updates. Town awarded repairs. Uh, I think you said you had a bill. Yes, I got the electrical guy in to declutter, uh, well, actually add more boxes and declutter the wiring on the uh, 
ground, what I'll call the ground floor, and a little bit up in the second, in the main. Okay. There's the bill, I can send it electronically. It's one of these um, QuickBooks deals. But I don't know what account it should come out of. I thought it would be first floor rehab. I think that is first floor rehab, because we do have electric in there. Yep. So. Yeah. I'm sorry, what was the total? Two, sorry. He bid 21.30 and came in at 23.50, so he's he's on the money. Yeah, okay. Nothing was, there is one aspect of this that's not done yet. He suggested that we put a whole building surge protection system in, and he's going to come back with that information later. Yeah, so I'm surprised we don't. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we may yeah, be we may still add a whole building search protection. Yeah, it's kind of nibbling at the problem, but we're getting it a little bit at the time. Okay, so you met with Goldsmith Electrical. No, you didn't meet with He's them, all they done. installed it to declutter and upgrade the wiring. Yes, more more outlets and. The goal is to get rid of all these extension cords and all the stuff you trip over when you're trying to move around. Yeah. This is on the first floor. Uh, it's first floor yeah. and also and basement. basement. Okay, thanks. Okay. He's a very good guy. He's also the building electrical inspector for the town. So oh. He walked in. Very good. Good. good session with him. Okay. Thank you for doing that, Tom. No problem. Um, Where do I send this electronically? To you? You can send it to me, and I think we send it to CPC, and they pay for it. I think you're right. So I think that's if the process. We designate it. Yeah, because they have it designated. So it's not like we get the money into our own account. I think we send it to CPC, and then they take it out of that. So if you huh. want to send it to me, I can do that. I could do that when I'm sending an email about the boiler, boiler pump. pump. Yep. Okay. Um, and then uh, brick repair. Um, I have not gotten to the highway department yet. Okay. My fault. That's all right. Or my delay. It's just spring now, so it should be. Okay. Yes, the weather actually <laughs> improved faster <laughs> than I thought it was going to. about hiring an OPM. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, we're going to have funds July 1st. What's the OPM again? It's like a something manager. project manager. Yeah. I forget what the O stands for. Operating project manager? Owner. Owner I, project owner? manager. Yeah. Owner project manager. What that person do? Who? So that person is going to, like, I think we're going to present to them all of the projects that the library needs done like we need a boiler replacement we need windows and have them help us develop a plan as to what should be done in which order so that we're not like putting funds in making repairs and then two years later we have to undo what we've done so so kind of being strategic and mm -hmm. how we are going to move forward with um, capital projects okay so to, give, to kind of just give that plan, and then ideally maybe they could give some suggestions for like potential contractors who might be appropriate, um, but they wouldn't necessarily be the general contractor to oversee it. Like this is to help us get the plan. There's no sunny employee right now. We do it. Who does this for the town? Oh. Okay. So I had started uh, a list of potential OPMs in the area. The question I had, I was thinking about, is when do we want to reach out to them? Because I know we had said that if it comes over six thousand, we would use money out of our funds. Yeah. But we probably don't want to get a bill until July first. So like, I'm trying to think of like timing on that. Probably soon. It wouldn't be hard, or I would imagine, if we start reaching out saying we're interested, if they could come based on our meetings and we have them come for June. Yeah. Um, so invite to the June. Invite for the June meeting. That gives them notice. Um, given that July will be scholarship anyways, but then we'll have the information for review. Do we have the CPC funds or has that been closed and 
It's not CPC, it's CIPC. Oh, right. And that will be approved on the town. Ideally, it will be approved on the town warrant. I believe that Nate likewise had a list, but it hasn't come down to us. And likewise, the town and slate building, library, etc. we're all going to go through the energy audit. audit. And that, I yeah. thought, was happening I thought now. Was yeah. Has anyone been approached? No. Uh, no. Okay. I'm going to... He has office hours on Mondays from 4 to 5.30. I'm just going to go Monday okay. and just have a, a conversation. Uh, to find out about the energy audit. The ener then we find out about the energy oh, audit. We can if I'm the back, merits. I will let you hear. Okay, that sounds good. And then, um, you know, you can talk about the article too, you know. So, so I'll just make that a point on Monday just to kind of swing down here. And hopefully there's not a big queue. Who's our uh, select board liaison, is it? It's, oh, it's Heather. Oh, let's invite her it is. to our May meeting if we can. It is, I said it as, it's Heather Monroe. Because oh. at least she was a town administrator for another town, so I think she can. I think someone needs to have a formal conversation as to how they'd like to integrate their thoughts and our thoughts. Do we want to invite her to a main meeting? Yeah. To the main meeting? What's her title right now? She's on the select board. So it would be our liaison to contact to the select board. We can't talk to them individually, right? Then we have to have them come to a meeting like we did with the town administrator. What? I think you could, there are liaisons, I think. Yeah. Oh, yes, you I can mean, come. Have a conversation. Sure. I mean, I, I could reach out to her. I could also work on this list, but I can't do it till I get back from what my list? trip. This OPM. I have a, a pretty good one started. So oh, you're, yeah. so like you have, don't mind contacting them? No, I don't mind okay. reaching out okay. to them, yeah. But I'm going to talk to, also talk to Nate and see if he has a list right. of, you know, people he would prefer Perhaps. that we work with. Okay. Before we just kind of go out. I, I could be wrong. I just feel as though it was months ago that he was working to try to get OPM or two for the town for different departments mm. and I didn't know if that would apply but it seemed like it would similar to the energy audit for all town. Okay, so. We've got the energy audit and then make a list of Town Administrator to find out about NG audit, OPM suggestions, and the warrant article for the merit pay. Yeah, I have energy audit, merit raises, warrant, OPM suggestions. I thought there was something else too. Oh, it'll probably be the next agenda item that we have on our item. Oh, the lights, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, should I reach out to our uh, contact or do you want to do that? Um, I'm, uh, it does not matter to me. I'm happy to do it, but, uh, but uh, it's fine. Also. You're going out. You said you're going out of town. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna be gone till probably the 25th. Okay, where are you going? I this one. Wisconsin. Oh. I was going to see some face war. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter is getting. She's getting her PhD. Oh, that's the thing. One week she will be presenting her oh. research that we don't good. understand. But that's, that's, exciting. Exciting. Yeah. Yeah. that's exciting. wonderful. That's wonderful. As long as she understands it, yeah. understands. Yeah. So she gets flooded. Awesome. Biochemistry. Biochemistry. Oh, yeah. Good for her. In there for a while, so it's time to be done. <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, so she gets in determined Madison? to be yeah. a teacher. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, she gets as a graduate, doctor. you there really are yeah. already a teacher. Doctor. doctor. Yeah, she's going to be able to stay there for a little while and continue some research until okay. she figures out what she's. What a milestone. Okay, so now the world knows about this. <laughs> yeah. uh, very good. Cool. Question. Yeah. At what point can we decide to go into executive session? That's a possibility, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to have a purpose. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Is there any uh, guidelines in, in, in prints in place? That yeah, state yeah. law. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
I could recall reading it someplace, but I don't recall the det details. And so. It's supposed to be for like personnel things. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There's a number of legitimate reasons. Yeah. I thought what they yeah. yeah. And it's in state law, and people think that it's in some way permanent. It's not. When you have an executive session, it's for an open, honest discussion. Yeah. But once the meeting minutes are written and the oh, issue is resolved, those minutes become public. Somewhere. Yeah. I don't know if that's what oh, she was talking okay. about. I knew that. Maybe. Yeah. Not should mention it. Yeah. <laughs> the law, type in Google, it'll come right up. Okay. Hmm? Google will bring you right up to okay. the reasons yeah. for it. I think there's five reasons. Yeah. yeah. We, it's on our list of agenda future agenda items is to talk through it. Pardon? So it's on our list of future is that agenda uh, items. It's oh. at the bottom. Right? Yeah. You open meeting and executive session. Yeah. Well, so maybe I feel like there's always so much things we to talk about. We also should go through the May uh, can be a nice housekeeping. Everybody should look at the ethics law. Yeah. Yeah. There's ethics, open meeting law, public records law. I think public records and open meeting are the same law. And Nate sent. Um, there's a public records and open meeting law training, which is what I think you went to, yeah. Krista, um, on Tuesday, April 25th, if anybody's interested in going to it. Is, is it online? Uh, 12 to 115, register now. It's a webinar, yes. Yeah, so I don't know, do you do webinars? No. Do you want to do a webinar? No. <laughs> okay. But you have minutes. We have uh, the PowerPoint yeah. presentation, yeah. right? Yeah. So, How did um, you get notification of that? Usually it's a town mailing. Uh, Nate sent it to the chairs. Oh. So. You could just forward yeah, it to Yeah, I would forward it to y'all. I just oh, yeah, went through and we had talked through it at a previous meeting, so I wasn't sure like, if there was interest in attending. We used to have like an all-town broadcast email. I think we still have an all-broadcast, but this was just specific for the chairs. I'm yeah. sure there are other specific groups. He's been doing mailings emails. Too specific. I mean, his videos, right? Yeah. yeah. Have you seen the videos? I saw one. There's, I think, three now. Yep. Um, all right, the moving on works. We have one last agenda item, um, and this is regarding the outside library lights. Um, Nate asked Chris um, if we would be open to the idea of like kind of changing the color of the lights on the outside of the library for different um, ways of showing support to different groups. So you could think like June is LGBTQ month, so you could have the front lights could be colored like rainbow color. Autism month is like blue. So is that Drug something? awareness purple. Drug yeah. Women's history month is pink, you know. So is that something we would be interested in doing? Um, lots of questions to kind of think about that. Um, one is we would need to purchase LED bulbs that we would have to control and I think we would, I think the more, the bigger issue I think would be, we would, who would decide what is, what is being yeah. shown yeah. and how so long and could this become like political? It's a politicization. I think absolutely it could become political. However, I think that this is a phenomenal opportunity. Given that the library is like center on Main Street, it's on our seal, it's on our town flag were visible. It could bring in quite a bit of attention to the library, but I think like we have been very diligent. I think that the trustees should come up with a policy with regards to light usage prior to Im implementation should we proceed with it. And at minimum that we consider such a policy for the future if we're not ready to proceed, at minimum to have it in place. There's probably a lot more groups than there are months. Absolutely. Who decides yeah. these colors, too? Mm -hmm. It's a very impractical idea. And I'm well, opposed to making, making a library a politi a politicized, which you, it is still anyway. You knew it from the very beginning. Um, I have no way I would vote for it, personally. Well, if it's, it doesn't have to be in the library. We can endorse it, or we can allow something to happen that isn't library directed, but in which in which case I would suggest that it be a separate light. I've worked on those lights. I'm getting up and changing light bulbs and going yeah, out on the balcony high. and she all that stuff. She showed me stuff. where they are. Yeah, it's I don't a, think it's, it's not an easily thing done, not easily practical. done thing, I, but if we had a something on the ground shooting it, I, I shooting at a wall or a tree or something. 
I showed Connie you can get this like electronic bulb that has different colors. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm <laughs> sure, but it's a matter of reaching it. <laughs> and I don't like the idea. Well, in the practice. time it takes for the present light bulb to go out, I think that we might be able to come up with a policy. I think it's you worth. You mean to wear out? <laughs> yes. Um, it's an eventuality that the light bulb has to be replaced. LEDs are much more efficient, etc. I think it's worth, even if it's not exterior, if it's interior, if it's lights being cast on the building, I think it's a policy that we should review. The library has in the past had book displays which have featured certain books of the month. Yeah. Um, and I think very similarly, bringing awareness of and being a, a participant in the community right now might be ending now that it's April, but I think it might have led from end of March into April, was Quabbin community, so multi-town effort to have multiple towns participate with Purple for drug awareness in Quabbin. So having that sense of community spirit and raising awareness, and part of our programming is that. So rather than just saying yes or no, I think it's something worth having a specific agenda item to review and to generate a policy of light use inside, outside, on the grounds. And then if and when it is implemented, that would be part of the policy. And I think having people such as Nate, as well as Chris present at such a meeting would be very beneficial. You mean we're gonna take a thoughtful approach? <laughs> Unencumbered by the thought process. Yes. It, it shouldn't be just the lights, like it should just be whether the library yeah. participates in support for awareness months or something. Yeah. Shouldn't only be the library. If the town's going to try to brand itself, which is what Nate talked about once, then it has to be more than just the library. We don't want to be the singular. Yeah, that's a town I don't think it necessarily no, would be town, a library except only. Except the, the committee of town to make up that kind of decision. Why should the library be involved at all, it seems to me. Well, you I think it's I'm an invitation, but if you look right behind and you see the seal, and if you look right behind Tom and our flag, what do you see? When you're driving up from Rutland and Holden and Worcester up on 68, yeah. one of the most prominent buildings that you see when you come in and through our town and pass by would be our library. So not that it would be the only one. We have the illuminated sign now. We do yeah. have information. We had a traveling like electric sign up at the rec field as well to where information's passed out. There's also the town common, which is up by like That's right. mm -hmm. GFA with a bandstand and information that like what? Well, I mean the, uh, the regular the, town common where we put okay. up our reindeer. The lights and, on the trees. All that kind of stuff. Um, so there's consideration with those. So if we're not the only one. Um, and only place where information is presented, but we're one place, and I think it's worth considering. And I, I think, think that's a perfect lights. trustee. It stands for well, like instead of a flag, they're using lights. I yeah. guess I'm opposed to both flags and lights personally. It just seems hard to manage because if we say, okay, we only do things that are important to the school, that's one thing, but if we say we're opening it up to... And that's an, where I think that we can we need put a thought into it and put a process into it so it isn't specific to, and we also have to take consideration and it really should not be anything that we rush into without consideration and without the input of other members, and it may be something that the trustees want to actually put out a survey to the community. Is it something that we want to do? So without saying yay or nay, right. I think it would be showing due diligence that the trustees take it under consideration. So you might ask Nate what he had in mind so that we understand it as well as we can before mm -hmm. we start trying to mold it or shape it or reject it. So, so I would say I'm, before I say yay or nay, I'm in favor of looking into it. Looking into it, meaning having lights. A policy. A policy, have light bulbs of different colors to stand for particular groups. It's 
a, it's a slippery slope, it seems well, to yeah. me. I'm not looking to have 20 different light bulbs. I'm talking one specific LED that can be white, it can be clear, it can be warm, it could be whatever color you want, or you can have it on disco mode. So <laughs> if we want to celebrate the 250th um, library at its present location and throw a great disco party and have the lights blasting, and it's the trustees discretion and in our policy that we say so we could we should look into it mm -hmm. we could see if other libraries have yeah such mm -hmm. a thing and I think that's a great we consideration too is what do other libraries do yeah I mean you know we, we did all those policies but I kind of stalled on it but we, that could certainly yeah, be yeah. another one um, I mean it could be too if this is something that is a little bit more town-wide mm -hmm. that say it is going to be at the gazebo at the field or is going to be across the street like, is that something we also want to be a part of mm -hmm. and what is it also saying if, if we choose not to and how much time notice do we need mm -hmm. and and not and not that light the what the current light is like Tom said it's like up on the balcony and it's, it's if we're going to do it it would be better to have some separate thing that would be easier to deal with well, we do it internally now. Mm. There's a spin around book rack that we have a, like a theme of the month. Yeah, that's true. And uh, I don't remember all the themes, but there were certainly. Yeah. In Chris's email, one. she had said something along the lines of you could buy an LED light that can be programmable by your phone. And she said her son does that. Mm -hmm. So it might be buying a light like Krista has suggested that once you get it installed, you can control the color just, uh, yeah. that's what by yeah. your it's phone. Just a, it's just right? like Which a would color, a bulb that could be different colors. Of doing it. Um, so. If we decide to do it. Yeah. We currently recognize awareness with book displays. Okay, okay so. So should we ask Chris to talk to him again? Or talk to him again or we would draft the policy I think that we should potentially to make it easier have a subcommittee to make the policy okay. a draft that the dress trustees could then edit I think we've done that similarly in the past with other policies Is it, am I wrong okay. no. is it a lighting policy or is it a how we present ourselves to the community policy it's a I would say this as a lighting policy because how we present ourselves would encompass more than just lighting. That's why um, you have to start with a so big policy before you get to the specific. You can't argue from the specific to the general. You have to go from the general to the specific. Otherwise, you're illogical. So, are we, okay. How do we present ourselves? We've already been doing it for a while. Mm -hmm. okay. We ought to ask Chris how that how that works. How does she choose what goes on that spin around kiosk? And well, that's a separate issue. We start, not the, the light starts, a separate thing entirely. And, and a light bulb in the, in the building, it seems to me. And that's what uh, Tate, uh, town manager was proposing lights to stand for political issues. Mm -hmm. Very impractical, it seems to me. And it uh, makes the library much too political. It doesn't really say anything either. Yeah. Like, you have to know. Like, you know, when it said Q drug, I didn't know what that meant because yeah. I don't have kids yeah, in the St. school, Patrick's you know, so, so it's like it's hard to know. Ball for St. Patrick's Day, for example. Yes. And it could, and it could mean something else. Um, and it's one of those things. And it could also be that we have a, we may or may not of come inside to find out what the light means today. Yeah, no. yeah there you go. Well, I, I okay, know so we'll, what I'm saying. I could certainly look to see if other libraries have some kind of policy that mentions something about support for awareness groups or. Yeah. I don't know what the wording is. Let's, as we said, look into it. Okay. Let's see what it is. Any other? Items for discussion. On that topic, do we want to set up a specific month and a invite for um, Nate where he presented it? Review with Chris. Are there other parties that we want to invite? 
is it something that we want to pursue in the form of policy before we invite them? I have it on my list of things on Mondays. On Monday. On Mondays. Okay. Like, just to see, like, what is, like, is this supposed to be, is this thought that this would be a town-wide thing? And I raised one participant? Mm -hmm. Or did he have thoughts on who was going to be the decision maker? Would it just be the library? Would it be a broader group? Right. Like, kind of a little bit about what his Thought. thoughts were on what this would look like okay. from his perspective and then what do we agree with that perspective or you know but would, would you mind if other people attended this Monday yeah. meeting okay. if I'm open I think I might yeah. want to hear what he says yeah. what is this Monday meeting about it's meeting with Nate open office hours with Nate with has me. public meeting uh -oh. Or, uh -oh. has open office hours and you walk in and discuss the topic of your choice I also was asked to try to get this CD out. Yeah. I couldn't, I okay. even brought it to another person. Okay. I can't even see what's listed yeah. as the files on it. Okay. Can I'll I take a step? Oh, try please. Yeah. What is it, uh, Tom? That was the, it's those, a, remember those plans that we had at the previous Architectural? Meeting? We're not sure what it is, because I, I can't get the list up. I can't even get the file It up. was a, a, a few, like 10 years ago, 12 years ago, we hired an architect to do the plans for the library to kind of add the piece onto the back and put a ramp on the front. Okay. You can't read it? Say this? I couldn't get the... Uh, yeah. if, if you can't, we can just contact them and see if maybe they... Is there a print version of the same thing? We don't know. I have no. some drawings, but I don't know what's on that disc. I can't even see into it. So I also had we were going to invite Heather Monroe to, to a, a May meeting. meeting. Yep. A May meeting. Okay. Yep, so I can also send her an email. And then, Tom, you'll send me the electricity bill. That's the right. Bill, um, so I can get that to CPC. Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and I'll plan to just kind of swing by here Monday at 4, so if anyone's interested, feel free to. If I'm back in by. town by then, okay. I'll swing by. It's not at the beach, I think I can make it. <laughs> Monday at 4, right? Yeah. Be with Tate. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's his yeah. office hours, so, yeah. you know, so we're just going to pop in. I should be free when you need to go. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, any other things for discussion? Good job, yeah. all, especially our scribe of the week. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing a great job, Connie, <laughs> and everybody. I think I think we're we're making progress. I don't progress. think it needs to be recorded after the meeting. If I show you the ones that I circled on the no, I just I wrote, put a note about a few okay. group, but yeah, maybe. And then what I circled on the back, minus my scratch at the bottom, those. Can I have this? Mm -hmm. and I'll give it back to you next time. I'm not worried about. It. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right, so it's 8.29. I um, make a motion to adjourn. I second. All in favor? All in favor. Okay. Thank you all. Enjoy the rest of your evening.